Hi guys, welcome to another video from Oscar Cooper. I hope you're all well. I want to start by saying I've reached over 400 subscribers. Massive thank yous to everybody who got involved. And I'm updating one of my lists. This is a couch co-op list. Two of my most popular videos are split screen and couch co-op best of list. So I found three more gems actually. Want to introduce them to you all, go through some of their merits. Hopefully you're all going to enjoy this. So if you haven't guessed it, we're going to start with Plants vs Zombies 2 Garden Warfare and it is a, this is a mobile game it started out with, a, like a tower defense mobile game from PopCat but it was a, it was a huge success uh, early on in the in the mobile gaming uh, industry and they came up with a third person online multiplayer with some great uh, single player aspects. It's kind of in the vein of Overwatch where you have characters to choose from and you go either head to head uh, or, or play in co-op horde modes. So let's start with a great feature of this game and it's free DLC or sort of special events that come in with uh, either the seasons, we just had a Halloween one and it looks like we've got quite a cool Christmas one coming up. Now this involves really cool new skins, also new weapon types as well on all the characters. I love games that do that, top marks with this. The split screen play itself is found on a terminal within the sort of open map uh, start screen and you just hop in, you have another player signed in, bang, job done. I think one of the pulling points for me with this game is the art style and the intricacies that have gone into designing all these characters. They have so much personality. Um, you have two factions, plants and zombies obviously, and they all break down into their classes. You have melee, you have heavy weapons, you have fast characters. It's a real joy. I love looking at the character models and opening new stuff on them. Talking of opening new stuff, the upgrade mode works with what's called a sticker shop where you, you generate money from doing missions or, 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 or whatever and then you get to spend it in this shop. Now I'm from the Garbage Pail Kids generation so I love this idea, the random sticker packs, the more rare stuff and the higher price ones, it's a really awesome addition. Also an awesome addition is the fact that you can flip to the zombie uh, mode within the open map screen which is essentially a level select screen and then go and find your opponent and have a sort of a showdown with them in, in the middle of the map. This is an awesome addition. As a tack on, this, this, this mode is actually quite in depth, there's a flag in the middle of the no man's land that if you raise it, you then have to defend it from the, the other team and there's loads of AI running around, you can see how hectic this is, it's, a, it's, it's an awful lot of fun to be honest with you considering it's not even part of, of the main game, well worth a look. Okay, so onto the main modes themselves. Now, the first thing you need to watch out for here is that if you go onto split screen, your online multiplayer is gone. Okay, so what that means is that you can only play against AI. Now, that kind of is a bit miffing, to tell you the truth. You get all the same game modes, and there's there's a hell of a lot of them. There's capture the flag, there's team deathmatch, there's all kinds of variations of those, even like the fighting and defending big bosses within maps themselves. But it's only AI. You can't bring in any external players. That said and done, it doesn't stop it from being a very healthy game mode. It, it does feature some awesome, uh, crazy situations and graphics. And you know, the, the adorable dialogue of all these characters is excellent. The, the amount of game modes keeps you going for a while, and the maps are all incredibly well um, designed. But I, I find myself migrating to the Horde mode, which has had a lot of time spent on it. You can select all your maps, there's a lot of decent difficulty, all your XP is, is working, and all the money that you generate, you get, etc. You sort of work around a, a central area to defend, but you also get different objectives within that. And uh, one of the funnier things is that you get a comedy boss spawn in every so often. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 
At the end of each wave, it goes into a sort of extraction mode where you have to get to a location and stay within uh, a circle and, and wait for the timer to go down to get picked up, a little bit like Hell Divers, actually. Um, I thoroughly enjoy the Horde mode on this game. It gives a lot of variety. You get to choose from an awful lot of characters, and it's it's, it's high communication. I.e., you, you find yourself sort of you know talking to your teammate a lot, and and it, it it does work very well being in the same room as someone whilst playing this. One of my closing comments on this is that Overwatch doesn't have a split screen player mode, and I love a sort of character based shooter with a lot of different choice on class and unlockables, etc. And this really scratches that itch for me. It is a full price game, but it looks great. You know, there's a huge amount of content here. Remember that that DLC that comes in regularly so a uh, number three on the list plants versus zombies to garden warfare Yes, number two on the list is Enter the Gungeon from Dodge Roll and Devolver. You know Devolver from Hotline Miami uh, and Hyperlight Drifter as well. Uh, as you can tell straight off the bat, it's got a great 8 slash 16 bit graphic style. And um, there's something very special about this game. It, it was recommended to me by a subscriber actually when I did the previous video and I got round to actually getting my hands on it. And I was so pleasantly surprised. It, it really does do so much for me on, on so many levels. I'll go into that in a second. One thing wanted to have a listen to is is how cool the soundtrack is on this game is it is absolutely brilliant So what is Enter the Gungeon? Well it's a roguelike uh, dungeon crawler that boasts random generation of each room that you go into on difference of enemy type and sort of setup. and it also has a big loot aspect to it where there's chests with various different weapon types in them which is also random generated and their locations are as well. So you play through each dungeon never knowing what to expect when you go into a room. Now the two player aspect works as player one actually goes and talks to this pink guy and then he becomes player two. You, he can, you can only be player the pink guy's player too. Player one gets a selection of four different characters. You have some variations on different specials and, and weapon types, etc. Now, there's one thing I just want to cover about this video is that I'm playing with a guy called Nick, Nick Alhaj. Nick's a big on Twitter. He's great on the hashtag wars. I'm going to put his link into the screen in a second so you guys can go and check him out. This is his first playthrough of this game. And I know there's a lot of hardcore Enter the Gungeon uh, fans out there who would be like, what are you two doing? You, you're terrible at it. But Nick did really really well. So let's look at the setup here. You get given a room uh, with an entrance and an exit. You're trapped in here until you clear all the enemies. One of the cool uh, additions of this game is that you can actually flip the tables. They become temporary cover for you. But it's fast, it's hectic, and it is hard. It is very hard. You don't get a lot of life. You're always on the lookout for a bullet that's about to smack you in the face. And there's a lot of coordination that has to happen, um, both with avoiding bullets and making sure you, your friend is being looked after. Now here's one of the chests, um, they're, they're pretty cool, they're colour coded, they go from gold through to brown and uh, you can see here that Nick's actually found a, a unique weapon, there's loads of them in the game.
You get boss fights at the end of each dungeon. These are also randomly generated. As far as I know, there's a choice of three different ones that you can get on dungeon one. Um, this is a great idea. You're always sort of on your toes, not knowing which one you're going to get. And they do not hold back with the amount of bullets that are on screen at any one particular time. An awful lot of fun and incredibly well done as a crescendo for the end of each level. Now there's something I want to point out here. There's no continues in this game. To get a continue to go from dungeon one to dungeon two, you have to fill out a various, various amount of tasks. One of these tasks is to complete the boss fight without taking a single hit to get this special shard to get an elevator working right. That was initially really daunting for me, but it's a really good way to get you due to loads of different runs. Um, you end up experiencing quite a lot of the game actually from, from finding out different things etc. And also, the game allows you to teleport anywhere in the map at any particular time. You get currency in the form of bullet shells, but you can pull the map up on the fly and go to these teleportation areas. This is great because you can go back to the shop, you can get stuff. If you notice an area you haven't explored, you can go straight to it. So Enter the Gungeon, for me, is could be one of my favourite co-op games that I've found so far this year. It kind of has this Helldivers-like difficulty mixed with this Hotline Miami-like retro art style coupled in with this almost no man's sky like random generation with the levels that you get it, it keeps on giving for me it's incredibly hard it's incredibly giving um, but it also is extremely reactionary based you, it, it harks back to a lot of the hardcore arcade games a bit like gauntlet or, or, or anything else that was you know didn't give you a lot of lives made sure you worked hard for what you got and it's got a really clever loot system so if you haven't checked this game out it's only about $20 and um, it's made with so much love uh, and a heart back to the retro industry so yeah end of the gungeon number two and at the end of days the first sign shall appear in the heavens justice shall fall Upon the world of men, the armies of light and shadow will clash across the fields of eternity. So number one on this list is obviously Diablo 3, the Ultimate Evil Edition, the Reaper of Souls Edition, including the DLC, uh, well everything that, that actually came out from the Diablo universe for the third title is all crammed onto this one disc. Now the, this is the PlayStation 4 version, there are some changes that were made for the console, and I buy games twice, right, I don't like doing it, I hate doing it to be quite honest with you, but GTA 5 and Diablo 3 for the PlayStation 4 are well worth purchasing again there's a couple of reasons for this one of them is that they have changed the control slightly so that you have a roll and avoid on your other analog button they've also zoomed the camera in slightly as well to give a sort of more intense action-packed setup with the gameplay itself you also get for breaking environment or, or furniture within the game some perks added like speed or higher damage etc now you, you are probably well aware of what Diablo is all about but if you're not it's essentially the king of all dungeon crawlers with one of the most detailed loot systems ever to be put into a game and uh, games like Borderlands 1 and 2 took a lot from Diablo because every class has its own individual set of weapons everyone has um, different types of right and left handed weapons and everyone has a really detailed skill tree that you upgrade and evolve uh, through the game and then the, then there's this whole new section of legendary items and then there's a whole new section to finishing the main campaign and doing what's called dungeon runs or rifts where you go to really hard versions of the of the game world itself to hunt down legendary items fight big newer versions of the bosses etc it is a huge game um, my only issue with it is the fact that it's got a very gradient or, or, or low difficulty curve you have to get to end game or put it on a really hard mode to find a challenge which isn't a bad thing it's great for newcomers I just wanted to show you a little bit of the weapons wheel and the armor wheel and how much customization you have with each of the classes there's four classes five including the new guy the crusader so there's range there's tank uh, melee all that sort of stuff this is the hunter and you also have so much detail on the armor and different armor types I thought I'd show you how 
crazy some of the weapons are in this game there's nothing better than just doing uh, a dungeon with a mate finding some new legendaries finding some new weapons utilizing them absolutely awesome Gameplay wise, if you don't know this series too well, you're probably thinking this just looks like a big old bloody mess. Well, it, it isn't. The, the theme to this game is just cutting through and slaughtering enemies at as fast a speed as you can. You're very rarely threatened with death. When it does happen, you get the opportunity to give yourself some life. And when it does happen, it actually changes things up a bit. You know, you really do not want to die in, deep inside a dungeon. Uh, potentially, there's quite a lot to lose. So you have to keep an eye on a few things. But it's all about stacking up your abilities waiting for their cooldowns just being efficient and cutting through these dungeons as quickly as you can and getting that great loot drop or doing the the, the actual dungeon run in a, in a high time to get some sort of reward or achievement etc top one on the list one of the best couch co games to come out in a long time Diablo 3 I will finish it uncle I will carry on for you 